In this video, we will look at two more types of dental trauma injuries, the concussion and the subluxation injury. Let's start with the concussion. Now this is not the concussion where you have a mild traumatic brain injury. That is entirely different. This is an injury to the tooth that causes discomfort. Specifically, this is an injury to the tooth without any increased mobility or displacement of the tooth from its original position. You will see pain to percussion as a hallmark feature of this type of injury. In a lot of ways, this is symptomatic apical periodontitis, if you're familiar with that. You know how if a patient has a filling or crown place and it is high and over the course of a couple of days, it actually starts to hurt. It hurts because the patient is in hyperocclusion and it is causing excess pressure on the PDL. With the concussion, you get instant pressure and damage to the PDL even though the tooth has not been displaced. I personally see this type of injury a lot as a standalone injury or in teeth adjacent to teeth that have more severe dental injuries. Teeth with fractures can also have a concussion. When you do your pulp sensibility testing, take your finger or a mirror handle and tap the teeth in the area. After an injury, if the teeth are sensitive to percussion or have pain to percussion, they have a concussion injury. Make sure that you test the teeth in the area with cold as you would for any other injury. For a concussion injury, the cold test should be positive without lingering pain. In some cases, it could be a negative response to cold and may be representative of increased risk of pulpal necrosis. A concussion injury will not look abnormal on a radiograph. Um, as mentioned uh, before, take radiographs to rule out fractures and to document the teeth post-injury. An occlusal and two periapical radiographs from the mesial and distal are helpful. Although a concussion injury can make the teeth sore or sensitive to percussion, no treatment is necessary. In the dental trauma guide, you will find the patient instructions and follow-up recommendations for patients with a concussion. Follow-up is recommended at four weeks, six to eight weeks, and one year. As long as the pulp remains normal, no further treatment is required. Similar to other injuries, if the pulp has not responded within three months, consider root canal therapy. Next, we'll talk about the subluxation injury. This is an injury to a tooth that results in increased mobility without displacement of the tooth. Along with bleeding from the sulcus and increased mobility, there most likely is damage to the PDL and possibly to the neurovascular supply. This damage results in bleeding from the sulcus and expect to see pain to percussion as well. As always, pulp tests the tooth and any other teeth in the area. It is possible that the tooth will have a negative response to cold. This could be a transient lack of response, but it could indicate permanent damage. You will see no significant findings on radiographs, uh, as we've already mentioned, an occlusal and two periapical images from mesial and distal are recommended. Treatment for a subluxation is to do a flexible splint for up to two weeks. It is also possible that due to bleeding, the PDL space could have filled with blood and products of inflammation, causing hyperocclusion. If this happens, you may need to adjust the opposing tooth for comfort. Patient instructions are in the dental trauma guide and follow up involves splint removal at two weeks. Make sure you check the pulp response at four weeks, at six to eight weeks, and at one year. If the pulp is non-responsive after three months, you will need to complete root canal therapy.